I want to talk about relative efficiency of all water heater types with you for a minute. Um, if you look at the curves, there's the pink dash curves and the, the, the black dash curve. Those are standard storage water heaters. As you use less per day, you have greater heat loss. Standby loss grows, right? If you go on vacation, you have lots of heat loss and no hot water consumption, right? So efficiency has got to be zero. Fair enough? And as you climb up, the efficiency of the water heater approaches burner efficiency. So when you talk about what to do in a restaurant, you're in this unique position is if they use about 150 gallons a day or more of hot water, a standard 75% efficient storage water heater, the least expensive one you could put in for them, is fine. It's going to be 75% efficient. That's not bad. If you switch to tankless technology, this is going to work. Gas tankless technology has this big bandwidth. If you're running continuous use, think showers, think health club, right? At continuous uses, 10, 15 minutes long, next one comes in, 10, 15 minutes, right? That kind of stuff. Gas tankless water heaters look great. Their efficiencies are over 80%. Anybody here do HVAC stuff? Remember when we had the new furnaces come out with the AFUEs that were in the 0 0.85, range, 82, 83, right? They were, had, what kind of flu did they need to have? Right. The problem is mid-range efficiencies get intermittent condensing. You sometimes get it, sometimes you don't. If you get it, you have acids you have to control. You need stainless steel venting. What do we have now? We have standard efficiency or condensing efficiencies. That's right. And so once you get above 85, 90% efficiency in burner, you're now in condensing and you expect condensing. And guess what? Your flue pipe went to plastic. It got less expensive than it was before with higher efficiencies. What happens here is this. At low, at intermittent uses, gas tankless water heaters are always ramping up, ramping down, ramping up, ramping down, ramping up, ramping down. And their efficiency over a day or a year starts to look much lower. That's why the big band. OK? What hot water use pattern do you have? You've got to pay attention to the hot water use pattern. I think that restaurants look like intermittent use patterns, don't they? Think about it. It's the busiest time of the restaurant. It's dinner time. There's a, the restaurant's got every seat full at the tables. How many people are in the restrooms? How long are they there for? Is it continuous use or is it a little bit of rinse, a little bit of rinse, a little bit of rinse? Anybody? Here? How long did it take to get hot water at the, at the restrooms here this week? Anybody go in at 7 o'clock in the morning? Hot water wasn't there. By 10, it was there, by the way. What does that tell you about the plumbing? Well, there's a research line somewhere over here, and there's a long branch. <laughs> OK? Low flow rate is a problem. All right. And when you get to uh, condensing gas, you can get in the 90 plus percent. I have seen test results of one water heater that at 30 gallons a day was actually 93% efficient, including standby losses. And at 130 gallons a day, it was 95% efficient, at including standby losses. I'd say that's a pretty good water heater to look for, don't you? What about electric? We know how to do electric efficiently as well. All right. The key is that we want to pay attention to overall efficiency. And ultimately, you want to take the knee of the curve and drive it up so that the efficiency at any flow rate and any volume per day is in the range of 90 plus percent. I'd say that's a pretty good deal, right? Again, I think we can sell the value of that. We just have to teach what to look for. A good water heater's got to be big enough. It do, look, it doesn't have to be big enough to handle the family coming to visit for Christmas. You've you got 16 people in the house. You're going to have to schedule lots of things, right? That's OK. That's not the issue for a stip, typical good water heater. But it's got to keep up with the hot water needed for at least one shower. Who shower? Your shower. Don't care about the kids. It's yours. Right? And commercial, it's got to serve the loads. So look what the capacity of a standard storage water heater is. A 50-gallon tank with 80% available volume, which, by the way, is high. 
manufacturers tell you to assume 70%, all right? Ends up meaning that if you have one gallon per minute at your shower head on the hot side, you'd be able to take a 40 minute shower. You got one of those new systems with the six shower heads and the, right, one of those deals? I don't know, what do we talk, 10 gallons per minute or 20? Which one do you like? You're not gonna get a very long shower, right? How many seconds is that one gonna be? And by the way, that was the one intended for the 20 minutes with a good friend. You gotta be, pay attention to what the purpose is here. This isn't gonna make it, right? How about a tankless water heater? I wanna keep up with a gallon per minute, I need 10 kW in electric or 40,000 BTUs in gas, roughly speaking. It's actually closer to 42,000, okay? How about if I wanna do 20 gallons per minute? I'd better have a really big meter and really big pipe. Fair enough. I went to a green, quote green, house uh, in Pleasanton, California. Uh, I was called out because something wasn't working right and they wanted my advice on something. I went and looked at it and they had managed to put the two water, side-by-side -side tankless water heaters uh, as far from the street as physically possible in that house, which is where the gas came in. And everything that was using gas was on the way to that point. They had two and a half inch diameter gas mains in the house. Do you think that was expensive to run those gas mains 100 feet? Say yes. <laughs> it was a real long, it, it, it just didn't work well. They were very upset with the way performance was. 